All right. What a sweet time. You want to keep playing for the rest of the message? Nah. Okay. No, that was just sweet. Really liked it. Come on up, Joe. Would love to have you. Come on up, Josh. Would you guys welcome my panelists? You have to clap. Ready? Welcome the panelists. All right. Don't sit too far behind me. I'm kind of stuck here. But... All right. One for you. No, you got to sit on that one. All right. Thanks. All right. All right, guys. So you might not know, but this is uh, uh, Josh Benson. Josh, would you say hi, wave? Give him a wave. Hey, guys. Thanks for the welcome. Is that on? I don't know. It is now. Thanks, guys. Um, so if you don't know, Jolene shared on the message last week. That was awesome. Who was here for it? Was it empty last week? Was it empty last week? Maybe a little it bit empty. It sounded like it was empty. <laughs> Who was here for Joe's message last week? <laughs> All right. It was super good. Listen back to it on YouTube. Um, super good. This is our third and final week of Soul Care, um, our series. And tonight we're doing a panel. So we're kind of sitting up here awkwardly. I didn't have time to get a couch or anything, but it feels, it feels good. So to start us off, Josh is just going to share a little bit of uh, kind of what God downloaded on him after I asked him to be on the panel. Would you bring him into your, your thought process? Sure. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Um, I am, I'll start off by saying I was very confident that Cole had the wrong phone number when he called me <laughs> and asked me to be up here. Um, I felt really unqualified for this. I'm not speaker in front of people I uh, my wife then called me out and it was really nice to know that um, the, the disciples weren't perfect um, and, and I'm really thankful that perfection perfect people are not just allowed up here because I, I wouldn't be able to be up here um, so I, I thank you for that just talking about mental health uh, I think each day we all have the opportunity to experience mental health um, and, and live anxious. Uh, and I, and I, I don't know much about mental health. I, I opened the scripture. I, I, I read, uh, what's the antidote? I, I just, like, how do, I, how do you fix anxiety? And I do well with analogies. You guys do well with analogies? Right? All right. So... I just thought about fishing. Who here Who likes to fish? Anybody like to fish, right? So I, I wrote down that, that when you fish, you cast, right? We, we, we cast out a pole, right? We cast out our line. I felt like reading, that's what you do with, with anxiety. You can, you can cast it upon God. Um, and I know when I say that, I'm sure many of you are, you know, well, Josh, that, that sounds easy, but you don't know what I'm dealing with. You should, you should see what I'm facing. You know, I'll never be as pretty as her. I'll never be as smart as him. I'll never be as athletic as, as that kid. And I just, you have to realize there's always something trying to steal your peace. You know, I, I was reading an article today that says we are in an epidemic of anxiety. And I, I guess I didn't know it was that deep. Uh, there's never been so much coming against our youth as far as mental health. Um, but that's not the way I wrote down that that's not the way that it has to be. Um, we were created to, to live in a different way. So I opened opened up scripture and it says to cast all your anxieties onto God. You can't you just can't go around carrying burdens of everything. Like you know, th this person said this to me. This person did this to me. Uh, that is not yours to fix. Um you by, by doing that, I feel like you're just weighing yourself down, carrying things that you were never meant to carry. I would ask that you just do yourself a favor 
and start casting those anxieties onto God. And remember that it's, it's an action that, that you forcefully can, can cast it. Um, I put down that uh, anxiety and worry will not, they just don't go away on their own. When thoughts come of negativity, you can let them in or you can get your pole and cast it away. What that looks like is, is stopping and praying about whatever's on your mind, whatever's bothering you. I put down that the enemy would love to fill your plate with worry. When it comes, don't let it in. Uh, the article also was just talking about how much it affected people 20 and under with comparisons. It talked about, again, everything I'm telling you, I, I, I've, I'm not, I felt unqualified to do this. So I, I did a lot of research online. And it talked about there's so much comparison. And I just struggled with, with that. By comparing yourself to others, you'll miss who you were created to be. Trying to keep up with everyone else, you'll, you'll just, you'll miss what, what was there for you. Take that pressure off yourself. And I thought, well, you guys are going to respond with how, okay, Josh, that sounds great, but how can I keep up? Well, I, you don't have to keep up. You're not competing with them. You just run your race. Be who God created you to be. But Josh, I, I can't do what they can do. No, I would respond with, they can't do what you can do, right? You are an absolute masterpiece that is made by God. Okay, Josh, they are more, you know, they're more popular than me. They're more, they just have way more friends than I do. My response to that was, throughout the years, popularity fleets. It can, it can change quickly. And then I looked up Palms uh, 55, which was talked about, um, about David's anxiety in the Bible. It, a lot of what you hear is about him just being a warrior. And the, I didn't know this till today. The anxiety that he had, that could have ended the story. Right? I, so I know this from my own life. I'm almost done here. I know this from my own life and what I deal with on a daily basis. Uh, the, the enemy would not be trying to stop you if he knew there was not a calling on your life for greatness. So don't believe the lies of the enemy. Anxiety is a season. It's not who you are. Let's say declare each day that the enemy is, is just not welcome. Anxiety I just is not welcome here. Um, I, I, the enemy works overtime in your mind. Don't let it in. Read about what David did with anxiety. I would encourage you to do that because I was blown away. That's verse, I don't remember what it was, verse 16. It was... He talks about how the, the most powerful attacks are not physical. They're mental. Uh, one last thing I've learned is when I say my anxiety is acting up today, I, I, I thought about that and talked to my wife about it a little bit. When you say the word my, it really it takes ownership. So the moment you say the word my, you're giving it permission to stay. So I would, I would challenge you, don't allow it in. Instead of inviting it with the my word, I would say you need to start casting it away. Um, I, I, I read this. I read this today, too, in the Bible. Uh, Paul said, be anxious for nothing. And I'm like, as I'm reading that, uh, that is a bold statement. Uh, I kind of was like, okay, Paul, come on here. Like, uh, I don't, it didn't make sense to me. 
And I was like, you mean, you mean we can't be anxious over a, of a test, a, a breakup with a friend? This person has more likes than me. Whatever it is you're dealing with, a breakup with a girlfriend, a boyfriend, whatever. Um, I, I, I ha- what else did I say? I have, so, so, so with Paul, I was like, that seems too good to be true. But then I kept reading. He goes on to say, pray. Let your anxiousness be known unto God. Pray and supplication. No idea what that word means. You guys can look it up, though. He says, lower yourself. Admit you're dependent on him. God is bigger than your anxiety. The peace of God will guard your heart and mind. The peace you have should not come from this world. It's natural. It's God. So he's supernatural. I'll end with this. When anxiety comes, grab the pole and cast it onto God. My, my past is forgiven, and the battle has already been won. Um, so uh, that's all I had today, guys. Uh, thanks for letting me up here. I, I hope it helps. Uh, I felt like a hypocrite coming up here because I don't, I don't live by this each day either, and I, I, can, I can do better. So thank you for having me up here. I hope you don't think I'm qualified for that. In, in terms of doing it every day, uh, I feel like we're all on that journey, that walk, and that's part of the motivation. Uh, not in having you up here, but just other people besides myself and children. Like, we had a few other people lined up, they all got sick on the same day. Um, but with, with that in mind, that uh, we're just people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we all, like, like, it's not because we're older. It's not because more experienced, we're yet further along in life, we have a house, a wife, and kids, like, that doesn't mean that we don't struggle and have anxiety, and I think it's just the, the things we have anxiety about are a lot bigger. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's less like how many likes that I get on Instagram, or who's following me and who's not, and more like, uh, right. my house can burn down tomorrow or something. Like right, that. right. Yeah, no. I just didn't a want tree the, could fall on my house. There you go. Right, I just didn't want the kids looking at us Okay, we have it all figured out. That, that, you, that's incorrect. So yeah. You know. um, For sure. I want to camp out on that last part that you said. Uh, you talked about what Paul said, right? To um, just kind of like like cast your anxiety, but like make it known to God. What does that look like? We'll start with Jolene because you just you probably got to catch your breath for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, we'll start with Jolene, but like, what does it look like when you start to feel anxious or struggle with mental health in some capacity? What does it look like for you to cast it on God? Um, I loved your my statement. Um, I think for me, casting it on God is always coming back to my identity. Like, who does God say I am? Um, it's really easy to identify with the struggles or what you're going through or the comparison or the my X, Y, Z, <laughs> fill in the blank. Um, but if you're, you know, ask God to bring it to your, to light if you're actually saying my whatever, because the, the reality is the casting is your authority. That's who you are in Christ. That Holy Spirit, if you were here last week, we talked about you're not in this alone. Um, that casting comes with authority. You have the power over anxiety. You have the power over these things that come after you, not in your flesh, but in the Holy Spirit within you. And it takes practice. I'm gonna add to the fishing analogy because you can cast it and then go, well, it didn't work, it's back. But sometimes we have to keep casting and keep casting and keep casting. And sometimes it might not be because of something we do or whatnot, But sometimes that pain or that feeling is so familiar, it's a comfort, and we reel it in. And then we cast it back out, and then we reel it in, and then we cast it back out. But the Lord says just keep casting and keep casting. So for me, it really comes back to knowing the power that's in you, knowing your identity, I guess. Yeah. How can you you not reel it back in? How can you keep it out? Because I, I struggle with reeling it back in, too. Yeah. Um, I think we all do. I mean, I do, too. I, it's when, 
last week we talked about think about what you're thinking about. And so it's like this massive amount of self-reflection. Um, anybody that knows me well enough knows that I'm always like self-reflecting. <laughs> I, I don't, I read tons. I don't read anything but self-help books. I'll be completely honest. <laughs> I'm like constantly like, help. Um, so because I do, we all, our human nature is to draw it back in. And so when I continually remind myself, what am I thinking about? That is not in line with who God says I am. I am not my biggest mistake or my biggest regret or the thing I did five minutes ago that I have shame. I'm not any of those. So it's a lot of, I think, thinking about what you're thinking about and casting it back out. And like I said, though, it's natural for us to pull it back in. It's just the, it's the response, cast it back out. Yeah, I don't know that we can avoid Reeling it back in. Just keep praying. Yeah, it really is. It's like, God, give me strength. That's one thing. I love David because I love the Psalms because yeah. it's that whole thing. If you watch what he constantly does when he's under attack, and this dude was like chased by armies, physical armies. Um, he had enemies all around him. And when I read it, I may imagine all the things that are trying to affect my soul that are lying against what my identity is in God. And I always think about what, what he does. And every time, the reason why he was a man after God's own heart, he literally humbled himself. I can't do this alone. God, help me. He's like constantly calling out for, to be rescued. And then even before he's rescued, he's praising God saying, because I know who I am. I know who you say I am. I, I believe you're going to rescue me. And so it's like a mindset. Yeah, and that's what I want to make clear to you kids here. I'm not a Bible scholar. I learned this today. What she just said about David was, I was shocked as I'm reading. I knew some of it, but I'm reading. I'm like, he wasn't the physical. He had the physical part under control. It was the mental, his anxiety that got to him, mm -hmm. which was, I, I found that really fascinating. Wow, okay, that story could have ended right there. Yeah. But he, he gave thanksgiving and, and knew he was covered in protection. He had a blanket of protection on him. Yeah, and you, when you say David, David's such a great example because you look at David and you go, of all people, right, of all people, why does David keep struggling? <laughs> like, I mean, he killed a giant. Yeah. Good, yeah. like hang it up, like king of Israel, gets anointed to be king of Israel, becomes greater than all of his brothers, has all this stuff, but yet he, like to the end of his days, is struggling. Um, so. It kept him on his knees, though. It did. It was humility. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes we think that if I'm on my knees, I won't struggle, but I think what all of those, that hard, like, he, like you said, he was like a warrior, man. Read his story, guys. It's better than any really awesome show on Netflix that's got all kinds of battle and crazy stuff. And it is an amazing story of David from Goliath to the end of his days. It is wow. But yeah, that struggle that happened with him, within him, he, it always drove him to his knees. And so we don't necessarily want to be like, oh, thank you, God, for this struggle. But always remember there's a purpose if it's placed right, like your pain can have a purpose um, when you lay it at the feet of Christ over and over again. Yeah, that's, that's so what good. he did. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure everyone in the room, ourselves included, would know someone who struggles with mental health in some capacity, right? You guys know someone who struggles with mental health. If it's not you, it's the person sitting next to you that knows someone or a family member maybe. Um, how... How, is, what, how do we support our friends' family when they're, like, not feeling good, when it's just not there? Because, I mean, if someone gets physically sick, I can buy them some soda crackers and ginger ale. What, what do we do when someone's mentally sick? How can we support them and help them? Go ahead, Jolene. Okay. Um, I think that I've learned that you can't do it perfectly, but do it. Like, be there for them. Um, I've learned more than ever that it's about the listening, about just listening. I think we run from it sometimes when someone's struggling. We just, it's uncomfortable to sit in their uncomfortableness. Does that make sense? Like, it's uncomfortable to have to face somebody that's really struggling with something. But honestly, guys, that's, you're not called by God to fix anything. You're just 
called to show love. And so if we can remember, it's not your responsibility to fix anything in someone else's life, um, but to just sit and be there so they know they're not alone, to listen. Um, obviously, you know, we want to pray for them. Um, all of those things that I'm assuming you already know. It's really fa easy to quickly go to scripture, quickly um, pray. But when somebody's really struggling with mental health, um, those are good things to do. But sometimes they can't see past just the moment where they just need you to sit and be in their pain with them. And you don't need to have all the answers. I feel like that's one very practical thing that I've learned. And one thing I thought, too, was if I have a friend that's struggling with mental illness, again, I feel very unqualified to be up here, but one of the things you could do is instead of texting them or however you communicate, hey, is there anything I can do? Just say, hey, I'm, I'm on my way with McDonald's, yeah. you know, to chat. Don't, because when they're in that position, they don't say, oh, yeah, why don't you do X, Y, and Z for me? That'd be great. They won't do that. Mm -hmm. So just just take the initiative and do something. Go be with them, like Jolene was saying. Yeah, I think that's really good too because wh why don't we? If you really stop and think about it, it's usually some level of fear that we have. That we're, we see what's happening and it's just way easier to listen to the fear of what if I don't know what to say? What if I say the wrong thing? What, you know, all the things. Um, which we already know that a spirit of fear is not of God. That is not who you are. That is something that's being impressed on you. The Lord says you have a spirit of power and of might, okay? That means that you can make yourself get uncomfortable and just listen and just be there. It's, it's really being outside of yourself, and that is the best way, I think, to show God's love. He's not forceful. He, you know, he, he lets you... When I'm struggling and I know God's with me, I, I know he's listening. I know he's gentle. And that's the kind of friend I think he was, he's mostly looking is just that we'll be his hands and feet. We'll just step into those spaces. That's really good. Um, what would you say for you personally on an everyday basis? What influences your mental health for the good? Say, ask that again. What influences your mental health for, for the good? Oh, um, just being with my family. And sometimes I struggle at that because I'm not there enough. Uh, being in the Word, and again, I fail at that, but that really helps me. Um, praying with my wife is very helpful for me. Um, just starting out my day in the Word is very helpful. Um, yeah, those are... Uh, Say. Great. Joe, what influences your mental health for the, for the good. good? I mean, you can say for the bad, too, if you want to. Okay. Well, does anybody know, like, I'm, I'm ho hoping I'm not the only one that wakes up a lot of mornings, and I don't even want to get out of bed. I'm just like, what's the point? I don't want to do this today. There's hands out there. Anyone? Okay. <laughs> God, I love Can't wait to go to school. <laughs> yeah, woo! Um, you know, and I, I would love, he's up here saying I'm not qualified. I'm over here like, just because I spoke last week does not make me feel qualified at all. Um, at all, guys. There's more days than not that I want to pull the covers over my head. I'm just being completely honest. Um, and in those moments, I have to seriously, before my feet hit the ground, I am like, oh, God, tell me who I am. Lord, like, give me strength. Give me hope. Give me, give me a fresh view of who you are. I mean, I'm like praying before I even hit the ground. And it's a lot of times crying out for him just to like hold me, like give me strength, you know, just give me new eyes to see the day. And, um, and a lot of times when I'm getting ready, I'll throw on actual worship music. I'll just hit something on Spotify. I, nothing that you, it doesn't have to be what you sing here. Just go on Spotify and say Christian music. And if you like uh, rap or R&B or country, guess what? Spotify's got it all. So just go out there and just hit it, and maybe you'll find something that resonates with you even when you're just at home. You know, So worship, I guess, mm -hmm. um, will, will bring my mindset uh, somewhere else. And then you, know, you take hits all day long that wants to make you go right back to bed and pull the covers over your head. So also just reminding myself, 
I have authority everywhere I go. I have the power to say, anxiety, get behind me. Fear, get behind me. Like, I am a child of God. And literally walking in that authority is, was a game changer for me. And it doesn't mean I don't ever struggle. I mean, like, but I claim that authority. I have to. I would have never been up here on stage yes, last week. I would not have been able to do it. I really struggled all day long with anxiety. I'm like, what is this? I normally don't, I'm not anxious like that in front of people all day long. And it was like, well, that makes sense. I'm talking about soul care. Huh. You know, yeah. so. I guess the same thing. When we started the series, I did this first message and I did not want to be here. <laughs> yeah. It's like anything else. Like, uh, can I find a way to not be here? <laughs> yeah, that's the enemy. I mean, that's, that's how it works. You, you know, this is important stuff. And um, it doesn't matter what age you are. You got to fight it. You yeah. got the authority. You have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. And it's not like this. Um, me and God's authority fighting against anxiety, guys. It's God's authority and anxiety's down here. God has no equal. He, he's already more powerful than anything that comes against you. We forget that. We just do. And so it's reminding myself before I ever get out of bed, I'm not alone. God's with me. Yeah. That's good. Um, we talked a lot about like casting it on, on God or praying. And sometimes I feel like when we are depressed, anxious, I mean, take it to extremes. We're like hurting ourselves or, or wanting to do those things. We don't have words to pray. Uh, we don't have, so what's a really simple um, prayer or something that they can just say to God um, that would be, like what, like, what would you say? You get to that point, you're just like, I don't know, wherever you're at. Like, what are the words you're saying to God? Because I feel like if you said that tonight and it kind of gave like some tools, like something as simple as five words, seven words, whatever that we can remember, we would be able to take that with us and, and speak that into our situation the next time we're there. Um, well, <laughs> oh, mental health is so big, guys, because it could be just struggling once a month with anxiety to it can be crippling and you know I need help. So... Uh, if you don't have the words for prayer, or you're like, I tried that and I'm still harming myself, or whatever it might be, I would say you ask for help. Find somebody in your life that you can speak to. Um, if that means walking up to them and saying, I have to tell you something, I release you from all responsibility to fix it. I'm not expecting you to have the right answers. I mean, sometimes we have to be bold and just say, I don't have answers. I don't expect you to have all the answers but I have to tell you something, and you bring it to light, um, the enemy right there loses a foothold just for the fact that you opened your mouth and you said, this is on me, I am struggling here. This thing is I can't get rid of, I've tried to pray it off, I can't get rid of it. Just right there, if any of you have ever like held a secret and then finally told somebody, I don't know about you, but I have literally physically felt lighter. It was like this black cloud just suddenly. It doesn't mean everything went away, but then you can start working with that person or the next person, or maybe they'll help you find somebody to talk to. Um, that's amazing. If you're not in that spot where it's like, I haven't tried this yet, I would say a good place to start is think about what you're thinking about or the feeling that you're having. Is it shame? Is it anxiety? And literally say, these words, shame, you must go in the name of Jesus. You have no authority here. I break our relationship. Heavenly Father, be here with me. Fill me with your spirit. I mean, there's authority and power in that. And that also means that you are walking with the Lord, that you have the authority to actually do that. So just make sure that you understand that if you have a question about that that was way more than five or seven words yeah it was but i think it was really good it was really good so let's say you know i'm in a relationship with jesus sometimes i struggle with anxiety put your thing on it right um as a room would you guys be willing to do that with us really quick we're just going to say um this i want you to be able to remember this because it's so valuable okay so walking with jesus we're going to just say we'll use shame let's plug in shame because i feel shame shame all the time right yeah um, Joe, just lead us. We're going to say uh, shame. Okay, so there's going to be a little bit more, okay? Oh, to sure, this, let's to do this it. prayer. Oh. But because one other thing that you want to realize, too, guys, is we're human. And sometimes we partner with things intentionally. And you know what? That requires some repentance. That just requires to say, man, God, I, 
I chose to, to feel this sometimes, not all the time. Um, so we're going to also, also ask God into that space. Okay, so here we go. Let's do um, anxiety. Let's do anxiety. Yep. All right. Um, you can bow your heads. I'm just going to ask you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, go after me. You guys say it after me. Heavenly Father, yes. Well, um, I'm sorry. I'm going to start over again. We're going to go straight to the battle, okay? Anxiety. Anxiety. You must go. You must go. You have no authority in my life. You have no authority in my life. Go to wherever Jesus sends you. Go to wherever Jesus sends you. Father. Father. I repent for any way that I have partnered with anxiety. I receive your peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, that's very simple steps. And does anybody, did anybody feel anything there? Did you actually feel any, anything in that prayer? Okay. Besides so, me. Hmm? I mean, I did, but... You did? Yeah. <laughs> so, obviously, we don't repent when we don't mean it. Like, if there was any part of that prayer you didn't actually mean, or you maybe weren't struggling with that, that's okay. But that was one example of a way you can step into spaces and actually have some authority. I'm telling you, the enemy hates that junk. Yeah. I, I have something real quick that just popped into my head. When, when you take that side of anxiety, to, you're basically saying... God, you can't handle this because it's too big. So just think about that. Is the anxiety in charge or is God in charge? He's already laid out your future. He already knows. It's, this anxiety isn't a surprise to him, right? So that, that's something to think about too. Yep, I agree. And when I say, like, did you have an agreement with anxiety? It's like, that's the my. Yeah. Yeah, well, I kind of own that, you know. I've, I've done that with a million things where I've just been like, yeah, oh, my, this X, Y, Z. So there's real power in that guy. That's knowing your authority, and that's actually exercising your authority. Okay, one last question for, um, and then we'll jump into small group time. What is, uh, what has been the, the thing that catalyzed you into victory over mental health, over anxiety, depression, whatever it is that you struggled with? Like, what, what do you think? Like, how did, what did that look like for you? For, for me, it was just handing my life over to Jesus and giving up because I tried to control it all. And you just, you can't control it all. You're not strong enough to do it on your own. Uh, what, what it looked like was absolute catastrophe and breakdown in my life and my wife is back there in my marriage and it just it was there was a path to take two roads so I just we laid it all down and here we are five years later you know it's it's been fantastic but there are days where I fail of giving it over right I try to control nope I got this the last two days, my, uh, you know, we, we go through different things than the kids, right? But my wife and I, the last two days, it's been extremely hard. We've very much struggled with a lot of conflict, and it just has to be given over. I can't control it. So That's good. I like that. I think the surrender part was big. You know, I, we're just told by the world that we are strong enough, and you can have it all, and, you know... There's no quick fix, and um, I think it's partnering with the Holy Spirit. Same, you know, that, that just surrendering, like I, I don't have it all. And then some real practical ways were um, I have to take time to care for myself. And that's not always just, you know, numbing out in front of Netflix or, you know, hanging out with friends, just mindlessly doing things. Those all do, you know, those are a nice break. But I've realized that I have to find my one to five people that will not let me sit in my misery. 
and commiserate with me. You know, you all have the girlfriends or the guy friends that are like, oh, I know. Oh, my word. Oh, that's so terrible. I have to find, I have a handful that are going to, every time I'm with them, they'll, let, they'll hear me out. They'll commiserate with me and understand. But then at the end, we don't walk away all downcast, you know, rolling around in our feelings. We walk away and they've reminded me of who I am in Christ and they prayed for me or whatnot. So that's a one really practical catalyst for me. That's good. But beyond the surrender was surrounding my, myself. You have your wife. That's awesome. I have my husband too. Um, but finding those people in your life that are truth tellers. That's really good. Really good. So that's your challenge then to find some people around you. One, you got to surrender to Jesus. But then two, find some people in your small group, maybe your small group leader. Maybe it's uh, one of the people up here that you just want to grab their arm and say, can I tell you stuff? Can I add one more thing? Yeah. yeah. If you want people to do that for you and have that little core group of people, guys, you got to be vulnerable. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. That means you really have to share the things. It's really easy to act like everything's okay, but guys, the person next to you, I don't care who they are, they are struggling too. And just like we said, when you bring stuff to the light, it has, like, right away the power starts to leave it. You start to win. Um, so find the people, but you have to be vulnerable. And once one person's vulnerable in your little core, all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, this is meaningful. This is good. This is healing. Yeah. So let's be those people that lay it down and be vulnerable. Yeah. I, was, I was just going to say, and if you... Uh, it, we're not trying to be negative up here on everything, but if, if there's one of you out there that everything is perfect and you have no issues and there's no mental health and nothing, and you're perfect, Jesus can't help you, right? I guess you're, I guess you're dialed in and you're good, right? <laughs> but I, I, I don't think that's the case. So, um, and I would end with this. Be careful with my, with the my word, right? It's don't let that take authority over you. So that's all. Yeah, I'll pray us out. We'll head to small group. Father God, we just thank you for this conversation, for the opportunity to uh, grow a little bit deeper, go a little bit further. I just pray that students would be vulnerable tonight, that adults even would be vulnerable tonight in our small group so we'd be willing to share uh, where we're at, what we're struggling with, and how we can be um, more intentional to lay it down at your feet and grow together towards a healthier and more fulfilling life. In Jesus' name. Amen.